Salutations. Welcome to another episode of OxyWord. And I'm your host, Joel Wilborn. In this episode, I'm concentrating on the treatment of women in a prison, especially uh, those who are guilty of sex offenses and uh, violent crimes. So uh, this young lady is giving her point of view from an incarcerated individual. And I think this is a message that needs to be shared with the masses. So please sit back and enjoy OxyWord. I am on the line with a young lady currently incarcerated at Mission Creek Correction Center, a prison for women. Will you please state your name? Uh, Stevie Chot. Now, recently, things have come across the news about high crime and how we are going to uh, cut back on it. A lot of people have been criticized for being soft on crime and violent offenders are being released without having to pay any uh, bail or without any special conditions. And so, of course, society is a little nervous about people like this getting out. Now, what is your feeling toward letting violent offenders out without parole? I think for, in my opinion, it all always depends on a case by case basis because um, certain cases different this branch uh, from another case, you know? Um, there is special case circumstances when it comes to cases like most women that are in here for a serious violent case when it comes to like murder and stuff like that it's because it's, it's a crime at chance and they're usually defending themselves now there are other ones where it's intentional and it's serious and they deserve the punishment that they have received and um I feel like keeping them on parole it can be a setup for failure because of the simple fact that um, POC officers, they aren't understanding or they're, they're extremely strict. Like, say you get a job and they're like, well, I need you to be here at this time. And you're like, well, I just started my job. You know, it's hard. And, and then they violate you. And it's discouraging, you know, when you get out and you're trying to build your life because it's already going to be hard enough with the charges that you have. So, in my opinion, it always depends on their programming that they've done here, the rehabilitation status, and the um, circumstances of their crime. Let's take into account the victims. Now, you could have a, a violent offender in there, and I'm sure you're housed with quite a few of them. They could be sex offenders or serial killers or somebody who murdered a person in uh, during another crime. Or it could just be somebody that's uh, a part of domestic violence. People that society would say these folks need to be locked up. Now, being a female in a female prison, I'm sure there's quite a bit of trauma that goes on due to the exceptional mistreatment that goes on. How do you think this will affect a woman who walks out of that prison compared to a man who was convicted of basically the same crime, walking out of a prison. Uh, 
I feel that society looks at it like they don't expect women to have the charges that some women have. Uh, especially women that are sex offenders. And unfortunately, the sex offenders that are in the prison do not do any rehabilitation and they continue, continue to offend while in prison and out of prison. I haven't seen any um, chances given for any serial killers and in my opinion that I feel like there shouldn't be, you know, is there's a lot of research done where something isn't clicking, you know, it's, it's just, I don't know how I'm supposed to explain it, but they are looked at and it's like they're held to a different standard. That society looks at you differently because they feel that as a woman, it shouldn't be like that. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So are you saying that society looks at a woman and a woman is not supposed to be a sex offender? And a woman is not supposed to be a serial killer. And in, in, yeah. yeah, so the, so, but you're saying. In, it, it, it affects people that are here that have trauma, that are here because of the trauma. And, you know, they look at, they combined us all in a whole, you know, as for personal experience, you know, somebody that has been sexually abused, they tend up to, they either continue the behavior or they become somebody that causes, that has a violent crime. As experience, personal experience, I was by a woman, you know, and I am here for a violent crime. And to be grouped and have people that I know grouped into the category is it's not I wouldn't say fair, it's just I don't understand it. It's because they they group us all in one. They look at it all one. They sentence us as all as one. That we don't have a chance to prove ourselves. That there is not understanding when it comes to women that are incarcerated. Now let's Sex offenders, sex offenders are not violent. They are predators. There's a completely, it says it, there's difference, differences and the same qualities when it comes to, because they are violent, they completely destroy the person that they have done that to, rather it be a child a full-grown person, you know, there's trauma that you never come back from whatsoever. Let's just separate the sex offender from, let's say, another violent offender like a, a murderer. And yeah. you're housed with mm, uh, just a multitude of, of Convictions for different crimes in there some more violent than the others Would you say a sex offender is more likely to continue Committing the crimes while in a female prison as opposed to another violent offender that's in there uh, Definitely because being in in a women's prison, sex offenders, at least this prison, sex offenders are treated like their crime is not wrong. They have girlfriends. They continue the behavior inside the prison. They're treated differently from the guards. They have special privileges, you know. There's plenty of women in here that are here for failure to register or another sex crime. You know, they're allowed to get out. They don't change their behavior. 
and they come back just for a short time and then leave again. And as if somebody that has a violent crime, they're here for 10, 20, 30 years to up to life, and they're not giving a chance for a very long time, if at all, to say, I have changed. I will not reassess. What would you say? Or the, prove that, huh? Yeah, go ahead. Finish that. Or to prove that the crime was just that chance that it wasn't intentional, it wasn't planned, it wasn't something that you really wanted to do, or it was somebody you wanted to get away from that you had tried and tried and tried, you know, and that person just kept breaking restraining orders, or you know stalking you or gaslighting you, doing all these things, and you felt like the only option was to do what happened, even though it wasn't intentional. A sex crime is intentional. It is planned. It is what they want to do. Of course, our ultimate goal is to keep people from committing crimes and keep the prison population down. What do you think we can do to prevent people from uh, retaliating, like what you were saying, and say uh, they're uh, stalked and attacked, and they feel that the only way to get away is to commit a crime. Is there some program or some kind of uh, service that we could offer that would help folks like that to make a better decision than to commit a crime? I feel like there would be a, a lot of options that you could offer better, um, like um, better classes that teach you on violence and abuse and trauma that um, there are mental health counselors here. I, I suffer from mental health and they don't know what they're doing here. They just, oh, well, let's try this med and let's try this med. And they, you know, they quote unquote listen to you, but the package that they give you, you know, it's just like it's not focusing on what I'm trying to tell you, you know, that um, the, training the officers a lot better when it comes to dealing with inmates, you know, that are here for traumatic crimes. And the ones that, you know, for like another ex example, there's the drug addicts, like they keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back, but they're given chance after chance after chance. They're given less time and less time and less time, but they keep coming back. So therefore, the prisons are going to be filled because they have a habit that's not like the TC program here. Yeah, you know, it can either work or it can't. It depends on the willingness of the offender, but they don't offer much, you know. And uh, I feel also when it comes to people committing crimes, some people are just going to do it, you know, and that's unfortunate. But if we offer programs here to help prevent it after they get out, that are on a more intense basis and really getting down to it in mental health where you really get down to it and you find out the trauma and heal it, you know, it will help prevent further crimes from offenders. Do you think we could help a lot of women stay out of prison if we started giving a little deeper education while still in school, you know, like grade school or elementary school? You think somewhere we could start to give proper guidance at that point. Yes, I feel like it would help keep women out of prison completely. They offer, like here at Mission Creek, they do not offer very many programs unless you want your GED or your high school diploma. There is business and which you only get a certificate if you were not to complete the class, it will not transfer to another uh, accredited college, you know? 
there's very few limited options here. And in WCCW, pretty, there's only six college classes, you know, if you want to cut hair or technical design or horticulture. Yeah, like someone, for instance, for me, I don't want to do any of that. I don't have any options to have to be able to do what I need to do to succeed when I get out. I'm going to have to do it once I get out. And if you were to have more programming and schooling, I feel that it would give us more options so that somebody that doesn't want to do any of these classes or just because, you know, it's just not interesting because if you're not doing something that you enjoy, you're going to lose interest quick, you know? And if you had more options, more schooling, I feel that a lot more women would step up and go to school so that when they get out, they can succeed. Okay. Now I am a big fan of the phone system. It gives me a chance to get inside the minds of you folks and, and get some good interviews going on. There's also an e-messaging service that allows you to do videos and um, send pictures and money called JPay. Do you think supportive relationships through calling people on the phone, writing letters to the U.S. Postal Service, or sending e-messages and pictures and videos through JPay. You think that helps folks to deal with the trauma that they're suffering inside that prison and that it can help them to uh, get back into society in a better way? In my opinion, it depends on um, the relationship of who you're talking to. Like, I have a mentor on the out that has been my mentor since county, and um, she has really helped me for when I get out to live a different life because, you know, I have responsibilities when I get out. I have children, and I have pictures of my children. And you know, all of these relationships are the ones that help me get through it and they're the ones that are helping me heal. So, I have friends that talk to me. I have people, you know. And when, the, when somebody that doesn't have that, I feel like it makes it a little bit harder because they feel like people don't care. They don't, they're not loved. And it hurts and it gets you in your head and, you know. I see many women in here that don't have anybody to call, that doesn't have anybody to write. So they search for that on websites or mutual friend, like people in here that they talk to and having them find a mutual friend. And you, it's a give or take thing. You can get somebody that's positive or you can get somebody that only just wants certain things from you. Well, thank you for that uh you have 60 seconds remaining. Insight into Mission Creek Correction Center. And before we uh, leave, is there anything you'd like to say? I just want to tell you thank you. Now, do you mind if folks contact you by JPEG? You said that's fine? Yes, that's fine. I don't okay. mind. All right, we'll post we your 30 seconds remaining. We'll post your JPay information at the end of this broadcast, and then uh, hopefully people will reach out and get more of the story. Thank you for your time, and okay. good luck on your journey. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. There you have it. She not only is a convicted individual sentenced to Mission Creek Correction Center. She's also a victim. And trauma, the fear of the people you're surrounded with, 
the uncertainty of getting out or what's going to happen, these are real. And these are things that these uh, human beings go through. So I hope that you'll be able to reach out to her, to your friends, to your family, to community leaders, and uh, let's open a dialogue. Women receive a lot of extra trauma that uh, together we could help prevent. So uh, if you can help, it would be wonderful. And uh, I think if we start education early, like in grade school, we might be able to prevent situations like this from happening in the future. I don't mind running out of people to interview. It means that we're getting back on track and society is becoming uh, a less of a haven for prisons. So thank you for tuning in and have a wonderful day.